Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and it's time for some dwarf action. Yeah, the dwarves are getting some nice updates when it comes to Thrones of Decay. Finally, possibly the third and final rework. Well, you know, knock on wood. But yeah, we got to talk about this because there's a few changes coming in. Some brand new mechanics, some changes to old mechanics, but rebuilding them from the ground up. And yeah, we're going to do so. So one thing that we're going to talk about first is there's been a brief change to some of the faction mechanics. We're not going to go over all the lords uh, because mostly... It's maybe just adding in a new value here and there. It's the same thing when it comes into the skill lines. The unique skill lines will be updated a little bit. Nothing too great. But all in all, when it comes to the faction and lord effects and also the skill lines for specific characters, they were perfectly fine. And that's a good thing because the most of the attention had to go to other places which desperately needed a fix. It's very obvious when you look towards the dwarves. Functionally, they'll stay the same, however, and I think that's quite important to note. But, yeah, there's pretty cool things. Which, for example, one of the biggest changes is technology, which has been drastically changed. It used to be just one gigantic mess, actually. It's probably the best way to explain it. Now it's been separated into two. Guilds and clans. Guilds focusing on your economy, so all the basic stuff building up uh, extra growth, diplomatic relations with extra factions, getting some more defensive supplies, all that usual stuff, and it's not as big as it used to be. It's a little bit smaller, I think, to the point that it's just more bearable, right? You don't see anything that is just overwhelming anymore. Now, yes, you are separated into different tiers, so you will have to get a certain number of different techs before progressing to the next tier and so on. In the case of guilds, you'll need seven to go into the second tier and then five to go into the next tier. And yes, there are some techs which cost oaf gold, but they are, they are pretty good. Like, for example, at the end of guilds, for 1,000 oaf gold, which is fairly expensive, you get two population surplus for newly captured settlements. That means that you're going to be able to upgrade your settlements much faster. Yeah, they are very, very good. And you're going to see that the dwarfs are going to be expanding a lot more. Not just yourself, but the AI is actually going to make use of this technology tree and become a lot more of a threat to the Chaos Faction the destruction factions and all the rest it's kind of nice to see the dwarves actually being active i mean as active as they can be in lore because there's not that many of them but yeah it's a pretty good change there's also the big one there when it comes to the clan section that's all focused on military it's a little bit better because a lot of tech now just kind of focuses on a lot of your dwarves so you're not going to be going oh this just works on rangers. Now, there are some that works just specifically on rangers or slayer pirates, for example, but it's not all the texts which feel that way. The spacing out feels a lot better, and again, when it comes to the clan system, you're going to need seven and then five to get to the second section. The buffs to your units actually feel like proper buffs now, where they were smaller in the past, but it was because you had to deal with going through this gigantic tech tree, which unfortunately took a while to get through this is just going to feel a lot better uh of gold is still a little bit annoying to pick up you know it's the same system that hasn't changed but yeah i mean if you still get into a decent amount of battles and so on it won't be that much of a problem i've been playing around with the dwarves quite a bit now and i must say that the change to the technology tree just makes them less of a slog gameplay wise the dwarves are still very much the same i know some people complained about that but that's how they were in the lore but the administration parts just feel a lot better. This is much more visually pleasing to look at too, which is a bonus. The problem with clutter is it bores people, and that's why that needed to go. But yeah, the warrior stuff is still very, very, very good. I really like the last tier. You can get so much experience gain with your characters and so on. And the last one is minus 5% upkeep. There's a lot of upkeep production here and there, so you're going to be able to get pretty much all your units being fairly cheap. Dwarven economy is still pretty good though, so you're perfectly fine. A very nice change that you guys will very much like is that Dwarf Warriors are still Tier 1, but they are found in your Tier 1 settlements. That means that you don't need to build up a barracks to get your uh, armored, shielded, hand weapon units, right? Which is very, very good. That means that you're going to have a more of a frontline defense. You don't have to focus on just having miners at the beginning of your campaign. I mean, miners are still very good, but yeah, it's a nice little change over here. Now, 
We're going to start moving into some new things because we have a new mechanic. This is the Age of Reckoning. This is a system which focuses around you getting into combat. There's loads of enemies around which are worth certain amounts of grudges. And yeah, as you start doing that, you fill up the bar. As you fill up the bar, you can get either some negatives if you aren't really quick enough. By the way, it's a 10 turn cycle. Or if you get into the upper parts, you'll be able to get some bonuses and some grudge settler units, which we'll talk about a little bit later. So this means, as you can see going around, and, you know, the various different orcs and skaven tribes around the area will be getting grudges. These grudges will also be getting higher as they, for example, raid, take settlements, or even attack other dwarf factions. So they're going to be worth loads and loads of grudges. The incentivization is there for you to get those bonuses, so your dwarfs will be a bit more aggressive. Sure, you can wait, but you're going to miss out and you're going to get some negatives. And the idea is, these grudges are a new currency, which we'll talk about a little bit later, don't you worry. So you want to pick them up anyway, it's not just because of the Age of Reckoning. There is a little bit of a feeling of racing against the clock, which I know some people might not like, but it definitely gives you a little bit more of a push, which is desperately needed. Now, as you start progressing and progressing, some other changes come into effect. As you can see right now, you need around, what, 4,200 grudges, which isn't too bad. That's something that you're going to get super early on. Uh, you won't get all the way to the end unless you're very hyper-aggressive, and that very much depends on the player. But as you progress for it further, yeah, you're going to need more. Usually this happens because you're revealing more and more of the map. So yeah, like now I need 8,900. Again, I need to be very, very aggressive here. Obviously this is because of showcase purposes that I've been more aggressive and I've revealed more of the map. Uh, funny enough, the Chaos Dwarfs early on don't have like a lot of grudges. I was pleasantly surprised. Well, more shocked than anything, but don't you worry about that. By the time that they do become a problem, there will be loads and loads of grudges because in certain cases I've seen Tretch being worth like 2,500 and I think at one point I saw Queek being worth like 4,000. So yeah, as they're causing problems to other factions, they're more worth it to you to take out. And don't you worry when those 10 turns end, well, yeah, you can skip the mechanic. There is actually a, a new reckoning that comes out. You can enter the new age or you can delay it, which means that you're going to have to earn more grudges, by the way, but it's going to buy you an extra 10 turns to relax, to build up your forces, build up your economy, and then go out on a proper rampage. Dwarves feel really fun right now, and it's definitely this mechanic has given them some breath of fresh air, but there's actually more to the dwarves. This isn't just it. You see, there's been a big rework to the Great Book of Grudges. Yeah, I know. Uh, roll credits. But, uh, so yeah, first we'll talk about the Legendary Grudges. There's some different ones here. We have a new mechanic also introduced, so there's lots to go through. With the Legendary Grudges, you know, it's the usual thing about going to specific areas, taking back specific holds, destroying certain factions, and you're going to be getting access to, for example, Oath Golds, uh, Settled Grudges, sometimes even a character, being able to unlock the capabilities to build up some new landmarks. Yeah, there is so much here. The Legendary Grudges section is probably going to be one of the largest portions of this video because we need to talk about a lot of things. So we're going to talk about the first one, which was pretty much just take over a bunch of old dwarf holds, right? Very simple as it stands. As you can see with this, yeah, as long as dwarves control the following provinces, yeah, everyone gets this bonus. Well, it would be you and other players. I've not seen the AI use it, but they might have and I just wasn't paying attention. And what you need to do is take the Northern World's Edge Mountains, Death Pass, Blightwater, and Blood River Valley, whilst also making sure that you don't lose Peak Pass, uh, Blackwater, well, Blackwater was something that was controlled by the Skaven, uh, the Silver Road, and the Southern World's Edge Mountains. As these are all areas that you're going to be taking naturally, it's not going to take that long to get there. And as soon as you do that, you'll unlock a teleport system. Yeah, the Underway Network has finally been implemented. It's taken a while, but yeah, there'll be a number of locations within the Keras Core that you can teleport to. And there's a further grudge which will allow for further teleport. So you'll be able to go to the Mountains of Morn, for example. Again, yeah. Teleporting. You're going to have a cooldown. It's around 10 turns, I believe, but there are ways to reduce that so it's going to be much faster for you, and that means that you're going to be able to launch invasions at a much quicker pace, too. Still in the Legendary Grudges section, yep, yeah, uh, you'll be able to get yourself the ability to unlock certain landmarks, like, for example, one in the Blasted Wastes at the Silver Pinnacle, which will have some vampires attack you, by the way. There is a... Uh, 
a fun amount of attacks coming from there. Then uh, you've got the Lumber Camp at uh, the Oak of Ages, which is really, really funny. It does make your crawlers, rangers, bolt throwers, and grudge throwers cheaper too for all armies, by the way. Uh, I, I just find it funny, you know. It's like, oh, we've gone into the Oak of Ages. Turn it into a lumber camp. Uh, <laughs> it's, I mean, you know, the dwarves don't like the elves. So it makes perfect sense. It's got some pretty good buffs. All of them have really good buffs overall. So you're going to be noticing this really, really well. You're going to want to start beelining for them to take them out anyway. Because the elves can be kind of annoying. Going to Ulf 1 has another one too. Overall, the legendary grudge system is going to send you across the world with benefits that actually make sense now. A lot of the stuff is here from original and just updated, and I think that's a really good thing. You can see that the core systems and even some of the uh, bonuses have been in the game already, but just, you know, properly brought into line with Warhammer 3. The dwarves feel a lot more like they're brought into line with everyone else now. This is a big thing because that's what we all kind of want from this. And more rewards are always nice. For example, here, taking over Nagarond and killing off Malekith, the Cult of Pleasure and Harganeth, will get you a pseudo-legendary lord. He is, uh, yeah, pretty good. I mean, you've still got a lot of legendary lords allowed to play with, and I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. But, yeah, it gives you something with a unique skill line, with a little bit more strength. Again more benefits you know pseudo legendary lords which focuses very heavily by the way this guy focus heavily on long beards you're going to be able to have a long beard doom stack and have them doing a lot of damage is actually really funny it gives you just another character to play around with something kind of minor but it's always nice to have however you're going to care more about this you see you can confederate with the other legendary dwarf lords yeah it's about time this is with the system of your grudges right so as you get grudges you'll be able to unlock certain characters the baseline for them is what fifteen thousand or so which doesn't take that long to get but you have to keep in mind that if they're getting grudges too that's going to be added so if say for example you need fifteen thousand and uh, grom brindle now has four thousand well you're going to need 19,000 to be able to confederate him. It's just how it's going to work because they're getting their own grudges as their own currency too. They're dealing with the same mechanic. Now, it's very important to note here that yes, if they die, you can bring them back. So you'll be able to have the characters regardless. And this is a pretty cool system because more stuff like this, this was originally implemented with the Beastmen more stuff like this really allows you to play Pokemon. A lot of people want to play a faction and be able to get all the Lords. This is why the Recruit Defeated Legendary Lords mod is so popular. It's slowly coming a thing into vanilla, you know, slowly but surely. I'm all for it, and the more that we can see it, the better. This is a good system for people just to have all the toys. And then finally we have the Grudge Settlers. So this is a brand new system, kind of taking from the old system of the Slayers. But yeah, you'll be able to get a bunch of units. All these units are vanilla based, so you'll be having access to them regardless or not whether you have the DLC. And they've just got better stats overall. This is actually tied to your mechanic with the Age of Reckoning. And you'll be able to recruit these guys instantly. So every 10 turns, if you get to a certain threshold, you'll get a bunch added into a mercenary pool. And yeah, it'll work like a dwarf mercenary system here. Now, they don't cost anything to recruit. And that's a really cool thing. They do have upkeep though, so keep that in mind. And if you get to the end of the Age of Reckoning, a full army will actually spawn. I think the one that spawned for me was around 18. Uh, and yeah, it's generally like a end game stack. That's why you can't get to the end of the Age of Reckoning in the first 10 turns, because it's, it's, it's pretty disgusting, let me just tell you. I think the army had like five, no, sorry, four flame cannons. It was just like, why? Overall, this means that you've got the degrading army there, and then you've also got the ones that you can recruit. You can save them like you normally do for Regiments of Renown to spawn at a oh shit moment, or you can start spawning more and more armies just to get them out there and do as much freaking damage as possible, because... I mean, who doesn't want to do that, right? The really funny thing is with that army that spawned the Grudge Settlers, it was a Demon Slayer. This is attached to the DLC, but I don't have the DLC turned on. I'm not sure if this is intended or not, but yeah, I guess that means you can play with a DLC unit without even owning it. Okay, so now we've spoken about all the changes there. I, <laughs> I must say the dwarves are fairly in a good place now. I was actually really surprised. Now, 
you might see my surprise here and think, well, why is he saying that? Is he being negative? I'm not. It's just like, let's be honest, the dwarves have had two reworks already. And I was like, oh God, you know, here comes the third. But I feel like this is going to be the final rework for the dwarves. It's keeping all the stuff that we've already had and then just adding some new stuff to it or updating stuff from the ground up, but still keeping the core fantasy of the race up and running. Forek, um, Belagar, and Grombrindle are still the same as they were, obviously with the new additions too, but they feel good. They feel very, very good. I'm playing uh, Belagar campaign right now, and yeah, I must say, they feel, as a whole, the dwarves did really well. I played a foreground campaign during my own downtime just to kind of see how the rework was going, and I was taking over the map. I was pushing a lot faster. It wasn't the feel of, oh, I need to slow down. I was incentivized to keep pushing, and I generally play as a very aggressive player, I must admit, but with the Dwarves, it's always slow. Being able to get Grudge Settler units is also quite good because, yeah, they don't cost money. Yeah, they cost upkeep, but you're not paying for the recruitment, which means that that money can then be spent on other important matters like building up your infrastructure and so on. There's a good synergy here. Now, you can't get full armies of Grudge Settlers, I believe. There's, like, caps, and the caps can be extended, but overall, you've got them there. They're useful. They're fluffing out your armies a lot more. The changes to the Legendary Grudge System... Pretty good overall too. Still keeping the cool stuff from the last rework that they had. God knows, I think that was in Warhammer 2 when Forek got released. But expanding upon it a little bit further. The teleport system is incredibly useful as now you'll be able to move around the map a little bit better. Launch invasions into the Darklands with a lot more forces. And just in general help out other factions. I feel like a lot of people are going to really like this if they do a lot of co-op. Especially if you do like a whole Empire or Bretonia and Dwarfs co-op, right? Anything with the dwarves. I'm very happy that dwarf warriors are now considered like a tier zero unit. They're still very, very strong. They've still got great stats, but you'll be able to recruit them from the very beginning, which is just going to make your campaign a little bit easier and much more bearable. They're more expensive than miners, and sure, they're not armor piercing, but you've got that very durable front line. At this point, we are also aware that, well, Nurgle has gotten a rework, and so have the Empire, but in a minor degree where factions have gotten changed up. So patch 5.0 started to look extremely beefy now, which obviously a lot of people didn't expect after the whole Shadows of Change situation. There was some skepticism that we were going to see proper updates, but yeah, the Dwarves have had massive quality of life changes. Karl Franz and Balthazar Gelt now feel like DLC characters. And, uh, well, Nurgle got some pretty lovely changes, too. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Let's start a bit of discussion. There's going to be loads of videos today and, well, loads of videos coming for the next few weeks. And also, if you want to pop by, uh, I'm live on twitch.tv slash the Great Book of Grudges every single day until the DLC releases, which is on the 30th, by the way. We've been told today that we can confirm it, even though uh, they leaked it themselves. But, yeah, you know, better late than never. Have a good day, everyone. <laughs>